This was me before I let myself go. Um, <laughs> this is uh, why I talk about veins, but obviously not those veins. Um, what I talk about, veins are just fractures that have been <coughs> infilled with stuff. Stuff that's been flowing in aqueous solution through the rock, carrying uh, material in solution, then precipitate, precipitates out into those cracks. And most common materials are quartz and calcium. So you can see here, there's a, a vein that sits um, cutting through this rock. And what it's telling you is that episodes of fracturing and then fluid flow. And it turns out that, that fluid flow really is an extremely important thing right now. It's a big topic in our science. It's important for earthquakes and volcanic uh, eruptions and stuff like that. But also, it's important for issues like rad waste, for shale gas and things like that. How fluid in the upper most few kilometres is passing through the rock is something that many of you, if you go on to do geology and work in geology, may find yourself actually working at the front line with. One of the diagnostic traits is looking at the, the vein fibres, the crystal growth, because that, if the crystals are growing into a fracture, it can tell you how that fracture has evolved. So the most common one is, is this here, we've seen the wall rock, this is the wall rock, the edge of the fracture, and here we've got fibres growing into the space, and growing at 90 degrees to the wall rock. So that's essentially a dilation of structure, it's just getting pulled, pulled open like that. But if it's got a little bit of shear on it, what you would see is the growth fibres would, would change, they'd be at a different angle, and it became, you might have situations where they become curved, because the actual opening direction changes over time. In fact, I've got some examples of that. Oh, well, in a second, there's, there's a photomicrograph of a, a vein and thin section, and you can see there's actually two episodes to this vein. There's, there's one here, and there's one here, and there's a bit in the middle. But for this outer one, you can see there's actually, I don't know if you can just see these little crystal fibres. Again, that's a vein, a fracture that's opened up, and as it's opened, the crystal fibres have just grown into the space, and they've recorded, they've tracked the opening of that, that vein. Um, so my, my point is that veins have history. And you can, if you get a, a vein that's got uh, fibrous growth, you can start to, to do that. So this one here, for example, nice and simple, series of, of layers. If the fibres are at 90 degrees to that, that's just unloaded. Um, if we then look at this bottom one, for example, see that there's, it's open with some degree of shear. So there's been some displacement on this, some left lateral, that's blocks, been a little opening and moving to the left relative to the, the bottom bit. If you look at this one, here's the, the wall rock, that's the edge of the, the fracture. Initially, it was opening um, with the, the fibres going at 90 degrees. And then you can see a change has happened, a little bit of shear. And then towards the end, the shear has gone the opposite way. So the whole history there, and that's what these diagrams try to suggest. Uh, sometimes from the crystals growing out from the uh, growing from the wall rock, sometimes, as in this one, the crystals actually starting to grow in the actual aqueous solution and growing towards the edge, but at the same time, you know, tracking this pattern. So that B1 is the example we've got here, where it's just been a bleak, a little bit of dilation, a little bit of shear, but sometimes you don't get anything. Sometimes the fracture's open, and it's been open for a while, and then the aqueous solution comes in, and it just fills it in with crystals, and it's not recording the opening direction. Veins, by and large, occur in sets. They don't just occur on their own, because if you think about what a vein is, it's just a fracture. The rock is starting to um, try to um, develop deformation. It's not really got a huge enough of energy, so what it does is it creates a whole series of small fractures. And in this instance, what's happened is fluids have been moving through, they've filled in those fractures and that's it. It's been kind of frozen into the rock. Nothing else has happened. So we can see here, for example, a series of what we call en echelon, just sidestepping um, fractures here. And the way to interpret that is, is shown in this, this one here. Because what we're getting is, here's a, a vein that's opening in a, it's basically a shear zone. It's a dextral shear zone. And so the sigma one direction is in this direction and it's opening out in the direction of sigma 3. Does that make sense? Biggest stress is in this way, and it's kind of opening like that into the sigma 3 direction. Because if you think about right lateral, to produce right lateral, this is the way my kind of head makes sense of this, is that sigma 1 is in that direction, sigma 3, the direction it can move in is this way, so the net movement is there. So this would be for a right lateral or a dextral um, shear zone. So anyway, we got this thing opening up, 
And as long as any new tips in that vein will open up in that direction. But what happens in the middle? Well, the middle, it's fully formed, it stops, and so then it becomes passively rotated. So here, the middle bit is getting rotated in a clockwise fashion. That's its attempt to take up that, uh, accommodate the deformation. But actually, that's a lousy way of taking up the deformation, not very effective. And what the rock will do, is because it can't keep up, it will create a new fracture through there, and the whole process will start again. So when we look to these, that's telling us that sigma 1 was this direction, sigma 3 was that direction. So it's a little bit of left lateral shear across there. But you can see that actually it cuts through an earlier formed set of veins going in this direction, which was a right lateral. So what this is telling you is it's giving you a history. It's telling you that there was a right lateral zone of fracturing fluid flow, and then there was a switch in the stress regime. We talked about some of the practicals, how sigma 2 and sigma 3 can switch quite easily when you change the state of stress. So you can get stories out of this about how it's evolved. Here we've got exactly what's here really. Some fractures developed. You can see the rotation along the shear zone, so that's a right lateral shear zone that's, that's developing. This one here is this is a diagram from Fawson. Um, just shown that. This is a left lateral shear zone, so it's just all flipped around. The sigma 1 is now coming in this direction, sigma 3 is in that direction, and you can see this anti-clockwise rotation now of these uh, middle parts of the vein. So, question. Right lateral or left lateral? Sinister or dextral shear across that little vein array there? What do you think? So, I guess, is this side moving up or down? Fifty-fifty. I hear up, I hear down. The answer is it's up. Uh, sigma 1 going in this direction, sigma 3 going in this direction, so the net movement is that way. Um, a different set of structures now. We can see there are veins in this here. These are the uh, veins in exactly the same way. But can you see there's also little dark traces in here? And that's cleavage. So this is a muddy sand. So in this zone, and notice it's just in this zone, it's not out here, it's not up there, it's a little shear zone where the deformation has been localised. So the veins have been able to form as a result of the tensional part of that deformation, but the compressional part is accommodated by the rock trying to adjust to the accommodation to the deformation by forming cleavage. So it's clay minerals are switching up and getting aligned to be at 90 degrees to sigma 1. So if we look at this, here is sigma 1, direction for the fractures, parallel to the fracture trend. But look at it for the cleavage. It's at 90 degrees to the cleavage. That's what we would expect, isn't it? That you, you're compressing something the cleavage forms at 90 degrees through the direction of, of compression. So here the two of them occur uh, together. And that's not that uncommon. And we'll have a look at this next week in the practical, trying to get to reconstruct or deconstruct what's going on in this particular one, where there's different vein arrays been a cleavage arrays to tell you about the to tell you about stress. Stylolites. Stylolites are another of these features that just going back to cleavage for a second. Cleavage, you would never call cleavage a brittle structure. You've been dealing with cleavage uh, with, with Luca. This is a structure that's more akin to what you find in ductile rocks. It's a ductile process. The point is it forms in association with brittle structures. And, and stylolites are another example of this. What stylites are is the pressure solution. So you're, you're stressing a rock, and it's a rock that will dissolve under pressure. So as you stress it, it's, so we're dealing with uh, largely carbonates, mainly limestones, where the calcium carbonate dissolves under pressure and moves out of the way. The thing is, it may move out of the way, but other components of that, that limestone may not be able to be dissolved. And instead, they leave behind a kind of dark uh, uh, residue. So here's a stylolite. It's this little feature in here. And what it is in is that it's basically the missing rock. It's an indication of where the rock was. So we dissolved it out of it and left behind this little uh, kind of um, patch of black. And here's another one here. You can see this very dark structure coming across. So what's it get to do with stress? Well, these stylolites, these are the way we represent them with kind of teeth that go up and down. And the orientation of the teeth is parallel to sigma 1, to the maximum compressive stress. 
So here, for example, we've just got a block of limestone, and what we, we get is here's the style of light, so the teeth are oriented in the direction of sigma 1. The plane of a style of light, I mean, it's not really a plane of surface, it's a very jagged surface, but that surface is parallel to sigma 2. But we can't really say anything specifically about sigma 2 or 3. We can, if, as we see over the road in the, uh, the cafe, where the limestone has got veins and style lights. Because here the style lights are the same orientation, telling you about sigma 1, and the veins are opening up in the direction of uh, sigma 3. So suddenly, when we get the two in conjunction, we can say something about that. And just finish then with, with this. So basically, it's a, a pretty pure limestone. You can just see how evenly spaced this is. This is the rock. You know, the strains that's on that rock, that particular lithology responds to that by trying to put that pressure solution dissolving and forming these really regular style lights. So whenever you deal with limestones, you'll, in any deformed area, pretty much you'll, you'll find these style lights.